John Stuart Mill, a very significant figure. And he's quoted as uh, saying that uh, uh, as an alternative to capitalism, uh, an alternative to capitalism should involve the replacement of capitalist relations by real partnerships in which workers would have a say in the governance of productive associations in their capacity of work providers, not as owners of capital, uh, not as managers. Uh, and in this form, labor would hire capital. That's OK as far as it goes. But actually, a mill went considerably farther uh, in important ways, important enough so that I picked it up and quoted it. This is from Mill. Uh, the form of association, which, if mankind continue to improve, must be expected to predominate, is the association of the laborers themselves on terms of equality, collectively owning the capital with which they carry on their operations, and working under managers electable and removable by themselves. Uh, notice that in this picture, there is no distinction between workers, managers, and owners. Uh, those who work in the, in the enterprise are the managers and the owners. Of course, a broader picture, which is richly developed in much of the left literature over the years, is that these would be in associations with self-governing communities. But as far as the workplace itself is concerned, there is no distinction between worker, manager, and owner. That's an important idea to pursue. And in fact, uh, it's related to another point that's brought up in the book, which is probably the most radical con comment here, but not pursued, but it could be, I'm sure, is in the volumes. Uh, workers who sign a labor contract sell their dignity as stakeholders when they accept the subordination stipulated in the contract, and they sell it for nothing, given that the pressure of unemployment makes them accept working for almost any kind of organization. In other words, the work contract itself is illegitimate. It's as illegitimate as selling yourself into slavery. And it's worth noting these two notions interrelate. If the firm, not just the corporation, but any firm, is a dictatorship in which, for most of our working lives, we subordinate ourselves to tyranny with no choice, there's a real problem. Uh, if uh, the idea that uh, workers and stakeholders, meaning people in the community, uh, should have a voice in this dictatorship is a step forward. But John Stuart Mill went far beyond. He said there should be no dictatorship. Uh, there should be just the association of people who are doing productive work, whatever it may be, uh, they choose their managers and can recall them if they don't like them and are constantly in control over them. Uh, no division, no managers, no workers, no owners. That's a much more extreme position. And it's uh, the illegitimacy of the labor contract, which is pointed out in the quote I just mentioned, uh, leads us in that direction. And in fact, it's worth mentioning that this is classical liberalism. It's not just John Stuart Mill. Begins with John Locke, goes to Adam Smith, uh, Thomas Paine, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, the whole of classical liberalism until it was pretty much destroyed by industrial capitalism. But the whole tradition of classical liberalism holds that the work contract is illegitimate. So for Abraham Lincoln and uh, believe it or not, the Republican Party, a major principle was that uh, uh, wage labor is distinguishable from slavery only in that it's temporary. They have a chance to get out of it pretty soon and be a, a person uh, who 
is not under the control of a master. And what's more interesting, this was the dominant view of the American working class. Now, there was a very lively label press in the mid-19th century. And one of its crucial ideas was essentially this. Uh, so uh, they pointed out that uh, the press discusses these working people, some of them, many of them women from the uh, farms, factory girls they were called, who had to, were forced to go into the mills, had their own publications, uh, artisans, uh, blacksmith and Irish blacksmith in Boston and so on, eastern Massachusetts. Uh, they uh, pointed out that uh, when you go into the capitalist system, the system of dictatorship, uh, you're moving from a system of price to wage. When an artisan sells his work for a price, uh, he retains his person. When he sells himself to a master, he loses his person and his dignity. This is a fundamental infringement on human rights. Uh, in a free society, it should not be accepted. Uh, these are directions, I think, that can be pursued much further. And it's one of the many points where I think this material offers a very good starting place for a conversation, as was mentioned, that can proceed to a real serious rethinking of the nature of society in many respects.